Soybean aphids, it's one of my favorite topics to talk about because we've had such tremendous yield gains when we control this pest early at low thresholds. Well, the other way to look at it, Brian, is think about the yield we've lost since we've started having soybean aphids. Yep. Back in the days where we really didn't fight aphids, I know growing up and even, you know, you think back 15, 20 years ago, we didn't have any aphids at all. And we hardly sprayed for bugs unless we had grasshoppers or something unusual in our soybeans. And as soon as we had aphids, we were seeing guys lose 10, 15 bushels really easy and having lots of disease issues starting to pop up in soybeans. Yeah, and even if you do happen to control this pest fairly early, you don't see a lot of aphids out there. I mean, even a low threshold, we might spray at 10, 20, 30 aphids per plant. Well, just think about that over an entire acre. How many plants do you have out there? Multiply that times 10, 20, or 30. You might have millions of aphids on a per acre basis. That's a lot of bugs that are feeding on plants. It's going to open it up for disease. So I think personally, that's one of the reasons why fungicides have paid so well over the last few years. Even if you only had a few aphids per plant, it's going to open it up for disease. You're much more likely to get that fungicide to pay. All right, there's been a lot of debate on this topic, Brian. Let's just get right into it. Economic thresholds for treatment with soybean aphids. Well, I, I'm it, just surprised some of these recommendations haven't changed, that it's still the same amount of aphids okay. before you treat. Yep, all right, so here's my big complaint with this whole economic threshold thing. If you go back to the early 2000s when aphids were first getting going and everybody said, okay, 250 aphids is the threshold. Well, I thought that was wrong back then, but even let's say that it was right. Back then we were dealing with roughly five, six dollar soybeans and we were dealing with the treatment cost of somewhere in the seven eight dollar range just for the insecticide alone oh and by the way our yield was less so if you just strictly look at economics let's just run the simple math if let's say beans were in the five to six dollar range back then and now they're in the ten to twelve dollar range today then by very virtue of the definition of economic threshold, it must change when the economics change. So if it took 250 aphids and now your crop is worth twice the money per bushel, then that threshold should be cut in half if you run the very simple math. So now I'm down to 125 aphids per plant. Okay, then you look at the cost of treatment. It only cost $2 an acre to use silencer as opposed to back then where it might have cost six to eight dollars. Let's figure on the low side, let's figure six dollars. So it costs one third the amount of money for the insecticide. Now if you want to say well you've got to figure the cost of spraying in there and you know to run a sprayer now costs a lot more than it did back then fine but still you're probably looking at half the total cost you were back in the early 2000s so now you got to take your 125 number divide that by two you're down to 60 65 aphids per plant and we haven't even accounted for the fact that back then we were going for 40 or 50 bushel beans now on our farm we're getting pretty consistent 60 bushel yields and more so everything has changed all right why has the economic threshold not changed why do people still continue to talk about 250 aphids obviously it's not an economic threshold that's what i'm trying to tell you if you want to use an economic threshold great do so but there's no possible way it's still 250 when the economics have changed. One thing that changed in the soybean breeding programs, and this happened at least a decade ago, is that the researchers started looking for resistance genes for aphids because that was the big demand when it cost quite a bit of money to spray for aphids and we noticed that there was such a huge yield loss when we had problems. Farmers were just clamoring, hey, we, we have to have something. We have to have a resistance option. And researchers did find resistance genes for aphids. However, the aphids adapt so quickly quickly and there's such a large population that they were developing resistance to those resistance genes very quickly. Now there are some of the RAG1 products still out on the market with that resistant trait and it does help. It certainly knocks down the numbers a little bit on the aphids but it's not going to be complete resistance where you say I, I don't have to scout anymore, I didn't even have to think about it. You still have to scout. Chances are you're still going to have to treat on those years where there's lots of pressure but it certainly is something that helps if you can find a variety that yields and works for your farm. The other thing that's going Going to knock the populations down is if you use a good seed treatment that contains one of those neonicotinoid insecticides like poncho gaucho or cruiser you're not going to get all your aphids but a lot of times we'll see the numbers cut in half so that can be a good thing as well once again soybean aphids can be the worst problem you've got on your farm if you're trying to raise a good soybean crop not only do they harm your yield but they can also introduce disease into your field that makes your yield even less get these under control fairly early at relatively low thresholds and consider the new transform that does not kill lady beetles well another big yield robber is our weed of the week we'll show you how to stop it coming up next